Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 116, season five, and today's date is March 29th, 2022. And thank you for joining me today. Uh, today's program, I will talk about two things. First, I will discuss White Hand Pantry, and the second thing will be photomat uh, stores that develop your film, like in the old days, and uh, this, this will be interesting. I will talk about my memories of those places, and it uh, should be a lot of fun. Right now, the program will go into a commercial break, and this program is brought to you by Photomat, and here is a commercial from 1975. Enjoy, everybody. Photomat wants to show you some pictures you never saw before. Pictures most film developers don't give back. Maybe you overexpose them or underexpose them, but that doesn't make them any less precious to you. So Photomat has a no-fault photo plan. We print every printable picture. And if you don't like them, we'll reprint them or refund your money, no matter whose fault it is. Because at Photomat, your photo matters. All righty, everyone. I am back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial for Photomat. Uh, if you recognize the woman speaking in the commercial, that is actress Pam Dauber uh, from Mork and Mindy. She played Mindy McConnell from the TV show that uh, ran from 1978 to 1982 with Robin Williams. Uh, I remember watching the show uh, when I was in high school. I was a sophomore. And uh, that took by storm. It was very popular because of Robin Williams. Uh, remember him landing on Earth in the egg <laughs> and talking silly? He did that until the day he died like that. And uh, he appeared on Happy Days on an episode. That's where he was introduced. And uh, I guess the character took off, and then they decided to do a show on him. And uh, like I said before, it ran about uh, till 78 to 82, then it went to syndication, and uh, I haven't seen it in years, but I bought the DVD, the complete series, so uh, not too long ago. So I'm going to start rewatching it you know, from the beginning to the end and see how it is. You know, it's from the uh, Gary Marshall family, the, you know, like Happy Days of Vernon Shirley and Angie and Out of the Blue. <laughs> All those shows, if you remember. Uh, fun times. Okay. At the beginning of the program, I said that I'm going to discuss two things. The White Hand Pantry and Photomat Stores. Uh, before I get into those, I'm going to mention a couple of things. Uh, I went to the doctor the, yesterday morning. I had an appointment. My regular doctor, not my urologist. And uh, uh, he took some blood. And uh, I told him that, you know, I haven't been eating much lately. Uh, ever since I started a new uh, uh, medication for my blood pressure, now I take two, uh, it's cut, cut my appetite. It, it just curbs it. I, I just, I don't eat. I eat, but I'm, I don't have seconds. I don't eat in between. Very rare. And I asked him, what, what, what's going on? Why am I, why is this happening to me? This never happened before. And he said, it's not the medicine. You just change your habit, your eating habits. <laughs> so I guess that's probably it. You know, and uh, so instead of the next six months, I'm going to see, I'll see him in three months and he'll monitor my weight. We'll see like that. But I've been eating okay, you know, at dinner, t you know, I don't have seconds. I eat, when I eat, I like struggle. Like I just nibble and then I do finish what I have on my plate, but no, I just don't have, uh, you know, I don't snack, nibble like that. That's pretty strange. And he said, you lost 10 pounds since the last time I saw you. And I said, oh, great. He says, and he also mentioned that if you don't eat anything, I would I would worry. But you do eat something, so that's that's fine. You just uh, you do it differently and the right way. And I said, oh, great. Okay. And uh, this past yesterday on Sunday was the fifth uh, five months cancer-free. Very pleased. So I will see my urologist on April 27th. And uh, have a checkup. We'll see how it goes. And then I'll post the, the updates on that on my social media accounts. The second thing I want to talk about is today um, the album Breakfast in America was released. And that was by Supertramp. And I remember this album 
vividly when it came out. And it had some great songs uh, released in March 29th, 1979. And I first heard the, the Logical Song. That was their first single on The Loop. And I think MET, maybe, WMET. No, I think it was The Loop on WLUP. And uh, that took off. And it, they played this song over and over again. And, and it was... Uh, and it's a classic. It really was. The other um, singles they played was Goodbye Stranger, Breakfast in America, the title, uh, Take the Long Way Home. And uh, that's about it, really. Those four songs, those four songs that were classics. And I did buy it. And I bought it at Cruise and Music, the record store across the street from Bogan High School, where I went. And I bought an eight track. I had an eight track player. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have a record player. I think I did, but no, I didn't. <laughs> I had albums, but uh, we had a record player, but uh, broke. So I, I bought a eight track player once. I forgot where. And my first eight track was uh, from Styx and uh, Pieces of Eight. That was the first eight track. And the second one was my uh, my. All time favorite album, The Cars, their self titled. I love that album. I played it all the time. I have it on CD. I uh, have it on my um, Apple Music. I had it on my iPod and uh, also cassettes. And when, you know, when cassettes were on, I played that. That was my, fav my favorite album of all time, The Cars, and their second album, Candio. I love the, I love the music. So that's my favorite. So I did buy Breakfast in America. Still classic, you know. You hear it sometimes. Uh, you know, Super Tramp. Uh, they recorded other albums and uh, then they disappeared, like in the eighties, like uh, in the mid eighties. So, uh, so, and the album cover on Super Tramp, uh, the woman. It was it, that's an actress. Her name was Kate Murtaugh. Murtaugh. M U R T A G H. And uh, she was the waitress Libby, and she's holding a big, uh, she's holding a, a serving tray with a tall glass of orange juice, and behind is the uh, Manhattan, the New York City, and you can see the World Trade Center on the left. Oh, that's eerie, <laughs> like that. But uh, you know, she's famous for that because she uh, she wasn't well known as an actress, but she did some uh, television work, and uh, she died in. 2017, at the age of 96, she lived a long life. So, um, like I said before, that album was uh, was wonderful. Okay. Right now, we're going to get into business. I'm going to talk about uh, White Hen and Photomat, but I'm going to talk about uh, Photomat right now. Now, you as know as the kiosk, that little shack, you know, like that. So, I'll give you a little history of that. It was a drive through kiosk. And they develop your photos. You know, you drive. It's like a drive through You drive over or you can walk and drop drop your uh, film, you know, like Kodak or Photomat. Um, and it was founded in uh, San Diego in the 1960s. And it was, um, let's see, what was the man's name? The man's name was Preston Fleet, Mit Preston Mitchell Fleet. And uh, he was nicknamed Sandy. And it opened, the first kiosk opened in Point Loma, California in 1965. Oh, that early. I didn't know that. In 1971, it became a public uh, company. And then um, first they had uh, photomats and then, uh, then Kodak. They sold Kodak and also any products related to Kodak. And the, you rec the kiosks were very recognizable. It's like a hut. You find them in a, a strip mall or a supermarket. And it had, uh, it was a pyramid shaped color, gold color roof. And uh, with signs blue and red lettering. We do that. And uh, they were around for a long time. And uh, let's see. And the, the, the only one I remembered on Photomat was near my old house. Uh, I lived in the Ashburn neighborhood. It was at 79th Street in Kamensky, one block 
west of Pulaski, right near Bogan High School. And uh, I used it once, and I remember the kiosk. And there was, I don't know who, usually it's a woman in there that worked there. She, I mean, can you imagine? She worked there all day long, all by herself. <laughs> like she was in a toll booth, you know, and it's amazing. But I don't know who would take over if she went out to lunch. Maybe she brought her lunch, you know, and I remember. It. And it's, uh, it was in the strip mall where White Hen was. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And, uh, you know, it was there for many years, uh, 70s and 80s. Right now, uh, it's gone. You know, it's not there. So uh, I'm sure it was at the, I'm sure it was there in the strip mall. I could be wrong. But, yeah, I'm sure it was there. And uh, I remember uh, they did advertise on TV, you know, with their film, with the phonomat. And uh, comedians made jokes about that. Also, when they started doing video cassettes, they sold video cassettes, and you and also uh, they had a video rental service. Um, was one of one of the first com companies that did that, you know, like uh, before video stores, and uh, they had catalogs. Well, that's pretty amazing. The service was called Photomat Drive Through Movies, and I found a couple of them on eBay. I don't remember seeing them in Chicago. Not really. No. And uh, believe it or not, uh, one of the first uh, movie studios that offered for a rental video rental for videos was Walt Disney, and uh, they made a deal with that. And uh, but first, uh, it got expensive. It really did, and it cost twelve bucks. You know, the twelve dollars is a lot of money back then. You know, it started in some in nineteen seventy nine or eighty, and then uh, later on they uh, lowered the price because of competition. Because a lot of video stores opened, like uh, around my neighborhood, and then in nineteen eighty two they discontinued it. They stopped it. You know, and then later on uh, the kiosks uh, disappeared and they closed them down. And believe it or not, some of them converted into like coffee shops. Little coffee shops, you know, and you could. I remember the one that I mentioned did turn into that. I could be wrong, but that was the only place I remember. And uh, so that was, that was an interesting. It was an interesting concept. It really was. And uh, you know, for to drop your, uh, you drop your film to be developed. Usually, you go to a drugstore. You would go to Walgreens. You go to Osco or uh, any drugstore. Usually it's Walgreens. Uh, you can still do that, I think. <laughs> I haven't done it in a long time. It's amazing. Okay. Next up, I'm going to talk about White Hen. Now, uh, this is one of the most beloved stores that people miss to this day. And it's uh, very iconic in the Chicagoland area. And uh, who can forget that jingle? You know, when you... Run out, you run out, run out to white hen. I'm going to start over. When you run out, run out to white hen. When you run out of anything, you run out to white hen. Ugh, you can't forget that. And they had some nicknames. They call it the chicken or the white chicken or the chicken, the white hen. Oh, any, anyway, that's, uh, I missed that store so much. I really did. It was wonderful like that. So I will discuss the history of that. First, in my memories, but first, I'm going to play a commercial with that jingle. So here is here is the commercial that aired on WGN Channel Nine in 1981. And once I play it, it'll bring a smile to your face. So here we go. When you run out, run out. To white hen, when you run out of anything, run out to white hen. You're going to love White Hen's Deli. You're going to love the fair prices on fresh meats and cheeses, homemade salads, and desserts. You're going to love the fast service. Whether you choose delicious deli items by the pound, a party tray, or a freshly made sandwich, the deli at White Hen. Great selection, fair prices, fast service. When you run out, run out to Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the white hen jingle. Oh, 
that's going to be etching my mind for for the rest of the day. Yeah, I'm sure yours too. <laughs> yes, I apologize for that, but uh, you know it's uh, it's wonderful to listen to that. So I'm going to give you a little history of uh, White Hand and uh, my memories of this place. So. Believe it or not, White Hand Pantry was found in Lombard, Illinois. And uh, they had stores in not just the United States, also Detroit and Boston and Wisconsin and Indiana. So uh, I don't know where anywhere else. I guess that's... Uh, and they were famous. And it, were, it was open 24 hours a day. And they had everything. They had coffee. Uh, uh, let's see. Frozen foods. Uh, maybe toiletries. Uh but the most famous thing they had was their deli. Oh, I love their deli. Their delicatessen, you know. Their coffee was very good. Uh, I'll get into that in a second. So I'm going to tell you my memories of that. Uh, the White Hand I remembered was uh, was located at 79th and Kamensky, or also like Karloff, between Kamensky and Karloff in that strip mall. And uh, I went there when I was in high school. Uh, so when you let up, well, during lunch hour or after, you know, after school, I went there to uh, make, get something to drink, like a soda pop, maybe a Coke, Pepsi, or uh, not coffee, but I heard it was good. And uh, let's see what else. I also get a sandwich sometimes at lunch. I did. Uh, but usually I went to White Castles on the corner across from Bogan High School. Oh, I went there like maybe two or three times a week. You know, I went to the cafeteria at Bogan, but mm, need something to change. Also, there was uh, the eating established around uh, Bogan High School was uh, Mr. Submarine across the street. There was Toby's. And also there was Barnaby's Pizza. They had that at one time. Anyway, so... Uh, Usually when I bought candy, it wasn't at White Hen when I lived in that neighborhood. I usually bought it at Edwards Drugstore, which was located at 79th and Hamlin, or at Crestline Pharmacy on the corner. It was right across the street. Uh, it was like a little a plaza, a little strip mall. I remember where Barnaby's was, and there was a Crestline, and there was a currency exchange. And I don't know what else was there. I think uh, t- uh, maybe a tuxedo rental place, I think it was. And then uh, it was there for a long time. Then the Sandpiper restaurant opened later on in the 80s. I remember my brothers and their friends went there. And uh, it was also a sports bar at one time. I forgot the name of it. I couldn't think of it. I used to see that. Then years later, they tore that down. And uh, they built a BP store, British Petroleum Gas Station. Then they tore that down. And now it's an empty lot. I don't know what they're going to do with it. It's just weird. I passed by it about a year ago. It was strange seeing it. That empty lot is huge. Well, I hope they do something with that. It's bizarre. Anyway, at the White Hand, uh, they were famous for their deli. Uh, I've had a couple sandwiches one time. I remember they. I had a turkey Swiss, which was awesome. Oh, it was beautiful. Be- wonderful. You know their bread. Their bread was delicious, uh, fresh. Their turkey, you know, deli meats. They loved it. They, oh, everyone loved it. I, I loved it too. And uh, they, so they had anything you want: they had fresh fruit. If you want some liquor, you want some beer. You know, anything. And it was open all night. Let's say you run out of something, or in the middle of the night you're hungry. Walk over there. Drive over there to White Hen. That's there. Someone is always there. Um, this is uh, information that I found out. Uh, I could be wrong, but this is what I heard from comments from Facebook from Facebook groups uh, uh, that said about the owner of Whitehand that was located at, at that location. And uh, it was uh, someone named Ma Beefy. <laughs> and it was like a gang. She was a mother of some gang. Not, not really a gang, but a bunch of guys that were called the Ma Beefy Boys. I don't know much information about him, but I used to hear about this when I was growing up. And... Um, Let's see. Also, because uh, Ma Beefy, what I've heard from people, what she was described as a a woman kind of buxom with big hair, (laughs) kind of beehive, and long eyelashes. And I think her name was Darlene. And I went there once and I did see her. I did see, sort of remember seeing her. 
And I heard she was a character. I really, I, she was uh, really an odd woman, but very friendly. Uh, she had a daughter named Debbie, and she, I heard she was very nice, and I did see her. You know, and uh, she was, they were well known in the neighborhood at the time. Uh, they owned that place for pff, like about 20 years or something like that, a long time. And then uh, I heard it got caught fire. I think it did. And then um, I don't know if they rebuilt it. I th Maybe they sold it and they rebuilt it and uh, someone took over it. I remember the dry cleaners. There was a dry cleaner store next door. I remember that. I, uh, my mom went there all the time. I remember that. And as far as I know, I think Ma Beefy's still alive from uh, from what I get. Last I heard, she lived in Orland Park. And I think the uh, they operated the White Hand in Orland Park, I think at 151st Street and uh, somewhere on 151st Street in Orland Park. And I, I think I remember it because my mother's friend lives nearby. And I remember the White Hand there. Then it turned into 7-Eleven. I think it, no, it turned into something, it's something else now. I remember seeing the white hand. Anyway, um, so for when I heard uh, Mob Beefy, you know, they were kind of tough guys, you know, they hung around in the park and all that, but I don't know. I heard they were harmless. So I don't know the whole story of that, but that's what I heard from that. And that woman. <laughs> I wish I'd get to know her. It would be funny. Anyway, so uh, white hand uh, stuck around for a long time. It was founded by the Jewel Company. You know, and it's first known as Quick Shop, and it opened in nine. The first, uh, st uh, the first one opened in 1965, and that was in Des Plaines. And then a few months later, it opened uh, in Glen Ellen, and then Bensonville, and then in Elmhurst, and then they uh, franchise. They opened up. They even. And then uh, when Chew was purchased from another company in 1984, they sold it, and then it became an independent company. And I think that changed. And then uh, in 2011, they sold it to another company. And uh, the quality just, you know, declined, and it wasn't the same. And then all of a sudden, 7-Eleven uh, bought them. And they convert them all, and then White Hand disappeared. And I think that's terrible. That really was. You know, I wish, uh, you know, I wish they didn't do that. You know, I wish White Hand was still around. That's a shame. It's kind of stakes. <laughs> so I still remember, you know, I miss uh, going to the store. I go to 7 Eleven, but it's not the same. It's different. It's different. They have delis, they have uh, the same thing as White Hand, but not when it was in the old days when I was younger, you know. Also, you bought cigarettes there, you know, and miners bought them at the time, uh, and they allowed kids to buy cigarettes. I did, too, when I was younger, so uh, when I started smoking, and then I quit. But then um, everyone did that. But they also bought cigarettes at Crestline Pharmacy. They bought it at uh, Edwards Drugstore. I used to watch that. I used to see that. Now, no. They put a kibosh on that. You got to be, uh, I think, over tw uh, below. I think over twenty-one or eighteen. I forgot the age because I'm I'm bought in a long time. So, um, but they also got people to buy them for you. Well, that was easy like that. So I, like I said before, I miss White Hand. So I wish it was back. Okay, that'll be all for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the program. I discuss uh, White Hand Pantry. I discuss. Also, Photomat stores and uh, great memories. Great memories. Uh, next episode will be episode 117. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it Saturday or Sunday. I have to think of a topic. We shall see. It'll be a lot of fun. So this is Pico Stanis, host of Vanish Gone Stories, the podcast. And thank you for joining me. I enjoyed talking about this. Oh, it was great. Awesome. And bye-bye uh, now for me. And here's Ray Rayner saying bye-bye for now. So here's a little traveling music from him. So long, everybody. Take care. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>